Oh, how different it could have been. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 massive roles turned down by British actors. I believe that fate brought us together. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe for more great content. For this list, we've gathered some of the most surprising examples of British actors who, either turned down, were in serious contention for, or were pinned to the post by another actor for a huge role. One thing's for sure, you'll never watch these films the same way again. Dark fire will not avail you. Flame of Udun. Number 10, Hugh Grant as King George VI, The King's Speech. Although Paul Bettany was also considered for the role, Hugh Grant would have undoubtedly been a more game-changing choice. Uh -huh. Ultimately refusing the role after it was offered to him, Grant would have brought a completely different feel to King George VI. Sure, the posh mumbling persona is something he's perfected in many a rom-com over the years, but Colin Firth adds an aura of distinct unlikability to the king, at least early on, something Grant would have arguably struggled to muster. It probably would have gone from serious to silly. What'll I call you? Your Royal Highness. Then... Then sir, after that. Number 9, Joseph Fiennes as Vladislav Spielmann, the pianist. Fiennes is a brilliant actor, but it's difficult to imagine him as the lead in 2002's The Pianist after seeing Adrian Brody smash it out of the park with an Oscar-winning performance. See what a wonderful piece of luck you've had today. That's the historical imperative in action. That's why I always say. Apparently Fiennes was director Roman Polanski's first choice to play Spielmann, but due to theatrical commitments, he turned it down. Good luck with yours, kid. Fiennes would have no doubt given a great performance, but after you witness Brody's emotional rendition and discover his dedication to learning the piano, we think it's safe to say the role went to the right guy. Number 8, Henry Cavill as James Bond, Casino Royale. But that doesn't mean I'm your enemy. Whenever the regeneration of Bond comes out, countless hats get thrown into the ring. For Casino Royale, the likes of Sam Worthington and Dougree Scott were considered, but according to director Martin Campbell, Henry Cavill was the only other actor in serious contention. And after seeing him in Man of Steel and The Man from Uncle, you've got to admit, he's got the acting chops. However, due to being just 22 at the time, Cavill was considered too young, and the part went to Daniel Craig. 40,500,000 all in. Number 7, Gary Oldman as Edward, Edward Scissorhands. A lot of people were considered for this one, from Tom Cruise to Tom Hanks and Jim Carrey to John Cusack. But only few were actually offered the role, one of which was chameleonic actor Gary Oldman. Tell them we were doing our job. However, Oldman found that the film's story was absurd, so he swerved it, only to regret the decision after seeing the finished product. It would have been brilliant to see what he would have brought to the table, but credit where credit's due, Johnny Depp nailed it. Your father? He didn't wake up. Number 6, Ewan McGregor as Patrick Bateman, American Psycho. Okay, so Bale was absolutely perfect for Bateman, but if it wasn't for Bale's determination to bag the role, we would have seen McGregor play the narcissistic, axe-wielding maniac. But the good times couldn't last forever. Although the likes of Edward Norton and Leonardo DiCaprio were considered, Ewan was offered the role by the studio Lionsgate. But enamoured with the part, Bale personally told McGregor to turn it down. And he did. How on earth did you get a reservation there? Lucky, I guess and we can't help but wonder what might have been. We think McGregor's nice guy image would have played pretty well. Oh, I agree. However, it may turn out just to be a wild panther chase. Number five, Tom Hiddleston as Thor. Thor. There's something about Tom Hiddleston's charm that screams baddie. But in early production for 2011's Thor, things were looking a little different for Tom. Why? Wanting to bag the role of the hammer-wielding Thor, Hiddleston auditioned but was ultimately urged by director Kenneth Branagh to fulfil the role of villain Loki. Why not? <laughs> and we're glad, mainly because Hiddleston plays the bad guy role pitch perfect. He also won a Best Male Newcomer award for his efforts. 
This was to be my day of triumph. It'll come. Number four, Liam Neeson as Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Spielberg at the helm and Daniel Day-Lewis as the lead, it was bound to rake in accolades. You alone may lighten this burden or render it intolerable. However, the role of the 16th President of the United States didn't just nearly go to someone else, it did. Although Day-Lewis was offered the role initially, he turned it down and Liam Neeson was subsequently cast. I'd be grateful. Neeson then went to swat up on Lincoln extensively, only to leave the project a few years later. Following an apparently enlightening table read, Neeson deemed himself too old and not right for the role. <laughs> what a life, huh? Number three, Emma Watson as Mia Dolan, La La Land. Yep, we nearly saw Watson star as Mia in the 2016 musical hit, and not alongside Ryan Gosling, but Miles Teller. The two were originally sent to star, but dropped out, with Watson committed to another musical, Beauty and the Beast. Where she meets Prince Charming. The role eventually went to Emma Stone, but funnily enough, Gosling turned down the part of the Beast in that film for La La Land. Watson turned down the lead in another musical before this too, Disney's live-action Cinderella. And why not? Number two, Tim Roth as Severus Snape. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. As Snape, Alan Rickman could induce terror with a mere glance. I mean, just look at him. Pretty. Clearly, fame isn't everything. This casting choice only happened, however, as the original pick for the role, Tim Roth, gave it up to star in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. I will stop him, father. Although we love Roth's character acting, we can't help but feel he may have potentially missed the mark with Snape's reserved, monotonous, man of few words persona. Or maybe he would have thrown that out and gone for something completely different. Imagine a Cockney Snape. What's wrong with that? Number one, Sean Connery as Gandalf the Grey, the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. Here it is, the one role to rule them all. A commanding presence, an iconic stern voice, Sean Connery surely would have suited Gandalf down to the ground. So why didn't it happen? Well, Connery was approached for the role, but turned it down simply because he couldn't understand the plot. The whole thing's so fantastic, it just could be true. Patrick Stewart apparently gave it a miss too, as he disliked the original script, leading the way for Sir Ian McKellen. You didn't think I'd miss your uncle Bill Burtis, But known for being somewhat anti-Hollywood when it comes to films, it's no surprise that Connery disregarded the role so readily. I kill for Zardos. You came here in the stone head. I don't know. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.